Ow. Today, we're gonna be answering the question nobody asked about. Can you beat Tears of the Kingdom with only shields? I'm gonna do my best to use only shields throughout the whole game, and there's gonna be some instances where bosses may require a very specific way. This game is like math sometimes. It requires you to defeat a boss in a very specific way, and if you don't do it, it's the wrong answer, so just bear with me. But of course, the majority of my damage will still be dealt with only shields. Also, as the one providing said video, I get one free pass. If there's a boss that's pretty much nearly impossible to defeat with only shields, I can use a bow to take care of the rest. Now, if you're mad about that, leave a comment. I'll be sure to ignore that. So, without further ado, my name is Josh, and I hope you enjoy. Now, I skipped most of the tutorial stuff because, I mean, it's the same for every playthrough. You don't want to see that. As great as Tears of the Kingdom is, it's still a Nintendo game, and that means we have tutorials that last longer than most movies nowadays. I mean, you get it. Ultra Hand, Fuse, Ascend, and Goldo. Shout out to my Dragon Ball Z fans out there. I essentially advanced the story all the way to the point where I got the paraglider. Now we can begin to gather the necessary materials. Our first goal is to acquire the Hylian Shield, which has the best durability and guard out of all the shields. Now, I was surprised by how unguarded it was. You would have thought this legendary shield of myth would have been protected more, you know, jump through a few hoops or something, but no, it's your average Zelda puzzle. You'll find it in the Hyrule Docks near Hyrule Castle. Simply jump down here, follow the path, light this torch, boom, best shield in the game. I've increased my knowledge since my last challenge run in this game, and I now know how to duplicate shields. But before that, we need to open up more slots, because only four slots for shields will not be enough. Better safe than sorry if you ask me. Now in order to do this, I went on a long journey, 30 minutes, of reuniting Koroks or solving puzzles meant for two-year-olds. Soar, my friend! <laughs> oh, there you are, finally! Now! Give me your seeds! Anyways, we now have enough seeds for an extra four slots, eight in total. Now as I searched for Koroks, I also found diamonds, rubies, and other ores that are necessary fusion materials for our shields. Diamonds do quite a bit of damage when you parry, and the ores when hit produce an explosion of their specific element. This will be very useful for the Demon King's army and other boss fights that you will see later. I got really lucky and stumbled upon this cave with a bunch of topaz and sapphires. Alright, so let's go over how to duplicate shields in Tears of the Kingdom patch 112. Find yourself a rock to rock, or as I like to call them, a good Friday night. <laughs> now what you want to do is drop Zare, your requested item, and at the very last moment, use your recall ability to reverse time. If you do it too early, he'll just stand there sucking for a while, do it too late, and the weapon will get sucked in and you have to reset. If you do it right, the rock to rock will do the animation as if he swallowed the weapon, but the weapon will still be there. Pick up the weapon and await the rock to rock to da da and await the rock to rock to spit out your duplicate. What's great about this glitch is it enhances the shields, such as extra durability or guard. What sucks about this glitch is this only works once per individual rock to rock, so I had to wait for a blood moon to pass in order to finish duplicating my shields. Now in hindsight, there's actually more than enough rock to rocks to do what I needed to do, but I have a big doo-doo monkey brain, so I waited for the blood moon, which will resurrect the good Friday nights that I did find. To pass the time, I helped out Hetsu by fending off these sentient trees. I fused a ruby onto one of my shields, and with each hit, an explosion of fire set them ablaze. One of the few cool implications that you can do with your shield. With him freed, I had my eight slots unlocked, and about another two hours to kill before the next Blood Moon. It happens every three days in-game if you didn't know that. So, instead, I went to go test my luck against the White Lionel beneath Hyrule Castle. Aw, oh, come on, dude. This was much more difficult than anticipated, and the beginning of my slow descent into madness. I'm sorry, can we get a replay on that? The plan here was to simply rotate and parry with the diamond shield. If you have any sort of material that does damage on your shield, when you parry, it actually does a sliver of damage. Now at first, I parried most of his attacks, but it only allowed for 1-2 to two hits, much slower than simply rotating and hitting his backside. Besides, rotating kept me out of almost all of his attacks, so it was pretty good. The best part is that the shield barely takes any damage, durability-wise, when parrying. After about a 7 minute ordeal of playing Ring Around the Rosie, the White Lionel went down, and I now had access to his horns for a much more suitable weapon, or shield, I should say. 
A blood moon still did not occur, so I went to gather some materials from the depths, specifically puff shrooms, muddle buds, and bomb flowers. I had a feeling these would come in handy for the boss gauntlet beneath Hyrule Castle. I also found the answer to another question nobody asked about. Did you know that no matter how many shield parries you do against Skeleba Coblins, they will not die? Like, it does damage, you just saw me take down a centaur on steroids, but against one of the weakest enemies in the game, they are untouchable. I have no idea, like, maybe it's because it doesn't have any knockback or because I'm too weak, but it was a surprise for sure. Now, at this point, I was done waiting for a blood moon. I had real life responsibilities to take care of. So, so I put a water bottle on my controller and had Link spin around in place for about two hours. Just thinking about life and how Twilight Princess is a better game. Until finally, I got the blood moon. How do we transfer to Bloodborne? I duplicated my white lino horn shield as well as filled up all eight slots and was officially ready for the boss gauntlet. Now let's get something out of the way. I anticipated this part to be insanely difficult to the point where I would go mentally unstable. <laughs> and I wish I was wrong, but I'm not. This gauntlet took me a total of four days to complete. And I didn't take a break either. Four days of constantly dying to stupid things like burning myself alive or from enemies off screen. I don't even know how that one happened. Notice that all these deaths took place against the Demon King's army. The bosses themselves have their own struggles, believe me. We'll get to that. But without question, this was the hardest part of the run. So many foes to take on at once and my best offense was my greatest defense. My first thoughts were to burn them alive with the ruby on the shield, simply block and let them do all the work for me. Uh, this was bad idea number one. Not only will I still get hit by bokoblins that aren't in front of me, this will take way too long. I have a very fragile social life and I'd rather not lose that because I was getting molested by pigmen in a video game doing a challenge run for a YouTube video. I then tried puff shrooms to conceal myself and fuse an ice key swing to parry ice onto unaware pig boys. This was bad idea number two. Again, this takes way too long, and the monsters that are not concealed by the smoke will actually throw rocks that do one whole heart of gloom damage. I also tried to mix in muddle buds to make them fight each other, but they'd rather scream than be useful, so that wasn't gonna cut it either. At this point, I was about five hours into my suffering, so I decided to take a break and fight a fire talus, just because I don't, I actually, I don't remember why I did this, but I did, but I got more ore as well as his heart of fire. Much like an elemental key swing, a parry unleashes a small wave of fire, so I thought this would be useful, and it was. This did decent damage and saved the durability on my two shields with white lino horns. Not that it matters in the long run, I don't think, but again, better to be safe than sorry. I went back to the depths, and after a few hours of testing out different things, I discovered that the Satfire shield was my answer. It not only froze my enemies, but made them slippery too. That got me thinking, maybe I can freeze them and push them off the edge. Better yet, why not bomb them off? See, this is what I love about Tears of the Kingdom. You can be insanely creative with how you face your challenges. And this particular stroke of genius worked beautifully. I lured each wave near the edge, had them attack me, and walked around to bomb them into the abyss. This took care of the boss Bokoblin quite easily, a major plus, uh, but the stragglers were a bit of a hassle. Nonetheless, I finally got past the Bokoblin. <laughs> For the Zuckerberg family, I had the same idea, except puff shrooms were used, considering their erratic behavior. I lured them to the edge like the great fisherman I am and then bombed them off as normal. It was pretty easy, actually. Now, the Gibdos were a very nice break in between. Considering their low numbers, I had no problem freezing the crawling variants, striking them down, and then focusing on the flying ones. Come on! Come well, that, that is if I could hit them. The Moblins were also very easy. I had zero issues freezing and bombing them, too. It's really all about numbers when it comes to this challenge. If there's less than 10, I'll be all right. Really, it was the Bokoblins that tortured me, so I I don't really want to talk about it. Now for the bosses, starting with Kogera. I didn't know this until recently, but you can actually just dive through his weak points, which is how the fight normally goes. On my first playthrough, I just kind of shot it with arrows. That's pretty awesome, and a stroke of luck on my part for this run, because before knowing this, I had no idea how I was going to pull this off. Considering this fight is how you would normally do it, there's not much to say here except that his theme is outstanding. Marbled Goma was next in line for a beating, and much like Kogera, the fight was pretty much the same except I just parried his eyeball. Using Recall to throw his own projectiles at him once he was dazed, I used Ascend to reach his eyeball and parried away. The damage was surprisingly pretty good. 
Like, imagine if I had silver Lino parts. I know some people are gonna be saying, technically, you dealt damage with the rocks when you stun him, so you failed the challenge. To that, I say, you forgot to read the fine print within the rules, so I'm in the clear. Alright, are you gonna do something, or... Gosh, dude. He's done this attack, like, what, five times in a row? I wonder if I can... Oh, I can. <laughs> Oh, hello there. <laughs> I'm scared though. I don't I I don't want to do that while he's not stunned. But it's good to know that I can get up there maybe for speed runs. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Finally, thank you. Dude, it took like 5 minutes for him to finally do this attack. All right, we're good now. Blah. I can't speak. We're good though. Recall that. Bam. Alright, cool. Fight's over. Thanks for playing. And adios, good sir. Now, the Mukturok requires a bit more of an unusual tactic. I activated my spell card, Polymerization, to fuse an Opal to my shield and had the boss hit me. Doing this twice will reveal the little miscreant, although I had to be careful because the mud wave was unblockable. I learned that the hard way. At this point, I think I was two days in and running on very low patience and sleep. You know what? I'm, I'm done. 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 After a couple of hunts in a superior game to calm the nerves, I went back to the Mukdarok. Now off screen, it is possible to chase him down with a shield, it's just very difficult. So for the purpose of just having him sit still, I used a bow to stun him. The second phase, however, is a bit of a doozy, because it's the same concept here, except when I exposed his naked body to the world, he would jump from sludge puddle to sludge puddle. For this, I had to use a bow. There's just no way I can remove all the mud and then chase him down effectively without driving myself crazy. It stung my pride a little bit, but it had to be done. Alright, come on, you little slime ball. <sighs> so close. You know what? I know people are going to be mad at me for this, but you, it, this does no damage to him, and if it does, it's barely noticeable. But you know what? We're going to use some opals, opals, whatever you want to call them, just to make this fight a little bit quicker. You get the idea. <laughs> Sorry. You get the idea. Have him block twice and then he just shows himself anyway. Freaking whatever. Alright. Uh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. I think I should be able to make it. Yeah. All right, muck the rock down. Now this is where things get a little messy, so get your bibs on because I'm going to feed you quite the mouthful here. First, we have Queen Gibdo. At first, I thought she could hit me with my topaz shield and simply go, you know, from there, just parry away. But much like that girl I thought liked me in high school, I was wrong. She would fly away instead, and I can't parry her from up there, obviously, much less throw anything that far. My arms are vastly, vast, the, 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 they're just weak. So I had to resort to shooting her down with elemental arrows. It was easy to chase her down and parry her back legs while avoiding her occasional attacks. That's not the issue. Even with the little damage I was doing, I like five minutes in total to reach her phase two. That's not an issue on my part. I can do that. But phase two, uh, no thanks. There are too many Gibdos at a time, and I couldn't merely focus on her without getting hit from behind. Maybe if I left one Gibdo alive, they wouldn't like reset and have a bunch of them spawn at the same time. I don't know if that's possible, but I didn't really want to find out. I used my one pass and shot her with Topaz arrows to seal the deal. Unfortunately, the Seize Construct is where the challenge officially ends. I fused a bomb onto my shield to stun the boss, but no matter how hard I tried pushing it into the side of the arena, only a weapon can do it. I'm sure someone will tell me off that I'm wrong, so feel free to do so, but as far as I'm concerned, there's just no way. 
Not to mention all the failed attempts that took me four days to reach this point. I wasn't about to experiment with the C's construct. However, I am not going to leave you empty-handed, because Ganondorf is absolutely doable with only a shield. So, I blitzed through the bosses once again, a one-man army situation, and made my way to the final boss fight. If you're wondering how Phantom Ganon went, that's how it went. Now, would it surprise you if I said that Ganondorf was vastly easier than the boss gauntlet? The boss gauntlet took me about, like I said, four days. Ganondorf, two hours. Not even that, I think. Ganondorf's fight allows for so much creativity, so I had no problem strictly relying on my parrying skills. Much like the White Lionel, I parried most of his attacks and snuck in some crotch shots here and there, but then I realized that the Demon King, the most evil man in all of Hyrule, had a major weakness. He could not fathom my unparalleled speed as I rotated around him, smacking his butt with a spiky shield until he bled into the second phase. The spear was my favorite because his animation pose would reset with every hit, and I found that hilarious. Come on, big boy. <laughs> he really can't touch me. I'm so surprised. The final boss is susceptible to ring around the rosy. That's so funny. Man. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> I will never not find this funny. Now for the second phase, I did my best to clear out the clones without hitting Ganondorf himself and with a shield too. Uh, that wasn't working out. And at this point, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I wasn't about to deal with five big, muscly men at once. Maybe if I had enough rest. It's essentially the same situation as the first phase, but he has longer hair now. Mm-hmm. Come on, Twinkle Toes. Little sidesteps as he tries to face me. <laughs> it's almost kind of cute. Finally, we have the third phase, which was actually much easier than you'd expect. Ganondorf will now dodge my shield parries, but at this point, I knew his attacks like the back of my hand. Besides a few hiccups, this fight only took about two hours, I would say, and it was actually a lot of fun. As you can see, my assertive behavior drove Ganondorf multiple times into a wall where he could not move effectively. I had many crotch shots of this majestic Gerudo man, but I remained steadfast and powered my way through this fight. All right, big boy, time to finish this. You know, you're not gonna reach me with that. Oh, I thought they would have like stopped halfway through or something. Ooh, wow, he broke my shield, how? I guess I was using it a lot, but man, I'm down to my last shield actually. Okay, this actually might be a little bit problematic. I just have to be careful. You can't escape me, Ganondorf. I'm right here, buddy. <laughs> I have him cornered. Ow. We're good, though. We're good. Nope. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if I can glitch him. That would be so funny. I don't think I can, though. That would be great, though. Oh my goodness. There's gotta be something. He's like flying up there. <laughs> Look at him. This is amazing. I love this so much. Oh. I'm actually surprised that didn't kill me. I have four hearts. Boom. Come on, Ganon Dork. You gotta do better than that, buddy. You gotta be quicker than that, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever seen that video, but it's hilarious to me. Yeah. 
Yep. Mm hmm. You can back up all you want, it's not gonna really help you. I got you cornered like an Elden Ring boss at this point. By the way, I'm super excited for the DLC. I know this isn't what this game is about, or what the game we're playing. You know what, whatever. We're, we're just gonna finish this fight off. Nope. Ah, the bow. Poor choice. Now, the dragon phase is scripted. You can use a shield, actually, if you want to, but it simply takes a very long time. And yeah, that's about it, friends. But to answer the question, can I beat Tears of the Kingdom with only shields? The answer is no. Too many times have bosses required a specific way of dealing damage or their mobility was too high or in grouped in numbers, it made it nearly impossible to face with only a shield. I had to use a bow or use a melee weapon here and there, and so strictly using shields, it was very unlikely. However, I would say 85% of the bosses can be done with only a shield, and I would call that a success, especially if that includes Ganondorf himself. Again, I encourage you guys to let me know your strategies or if there's something I missed. I thought about using cannons, but I didn't think they would be effective. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you did like the video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone, and of course, Stay safe.